and we just wait for the stream to kick in. Okay. The only bad part about that, about going to Twitch, is it takes so long for the stream to actually boot up. Okay. And the stream there... to actually sign off. Oh, okay. So there's like a delay to start and a delay to end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I stream games on Wednesdays. We stream our locals, but it's not like anything spectacular. There's no production value whatsoever. So we just throw it out there on uh, on Ustream. And just if people want to watch people, we usually just post the links if people want to watch. If you want to call a standy I got from Burger King that's for Spider-Man 2 production value, then by all means. Hey, it's way better than looking at my work clothes. So, you know in my closet that doesn't have a door so they're gonna put tj perkins with koto ibushi oh koto ibushi's coming back well uh since uh, hideo Itami got injured again they he need uh koto ibushi needs a partner for the dusty roads tag team and they're gonna put tj perkins with him oh, i just saw this on facebook Apparently, so, Mickey James is going to be fighting Asuka at the Toronto match. Yeah, I saw that, too. I don't uh, know a lot about Mickey James. I know she's an older. Not, like, older, older, but, I mean, like, as in she's been she's been, she's been been in WWE before, right? Oh, no, she's been in WWE for a long time. Huh? Okay. I just didn't know. I don't know a lot of the, like, I just know what I watch on TV, like, NXT, and I watch SmackDown over Raw, so, um, because... SmackDown's the superior show. I think everybody does. <sighs> yeah. Waiting for stream to kick in. Engage. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I so wish I was in Atlanta. I think we all do. <laughs> we all want to be there. I mean, I could be there if I wanted to. It's just, you know. Yeah. I don't want to drive. No, I don't blame you. Yeah, I saw that you had uh, that you had commons and uncommons to go to people if they wanted to swing by and grab it. And I was oh, like, yeah. I, I probably would have done that for sure. Oh, we got nine people <coughs> in the street. Excuse me. Hmm? Oh, cool. So, I guess that means we're live. Hi. <laughs> yes. We weren't sure if we were up, so we were just uh, jabbering along. Uh, hi there, Corey. Uh, hey, so Corey. So, the chat is live. So, uh, for those of us, welcome to Total Justice Gaming. My name is Joe Tano, and with me tonight, instead of Jesse, we have Chris Smith from the Rockford, Illinois, UFS group. Yep. Hey, everyone. What's up? Hey, Joe. So How's first, it going? Eh, not too bad. So first off, uh, Chris, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, You're welcome. It was very short notice. I just reached out, and hopefully it works. No, guys, it's fine. If the stream is stuttering a little bit, uh, I see everybody chatting away. Don't worry about it. Stream's going okay because I can still keep up with everybody's chat. Uh, tonight we will be talking about uh, what we think is going on with Nats. Chris has some pretty bold predictions for uh, what's going on there. Uh, yep. Wondering why we're not seeing certain characters as of late. Uh, perhaps they may show up yeah. right now uh, in the next couple days. Uh, we will also be talking about um, the new template UFS is going on about. Uh both the pros and cons, because it's pretty split from what I've underseen, and a quote from Jasko that just kind of made me turn my head a little bit uh, as they're taking away and adding stuff to the cards. And what else? Uh, if we got enough time, we will be going over the Bailcore uh, stuff that's been spoiled thus far. Uh, Chris, for those of you who, yeah. who do not know, please, by all means, tell us about yourself. Um... Well, I'm Chris, Rockford, Illinois, playgroup. Uh, we're about we're about eight to ten people strong. 
a lot of I know the majority of the UFS community from traveling the past couple years, but I've been playing since KOF 13 dropped the summer. That summer, I picked uh, Corey got me into the game, uh, demoed, instantly hooked because we had Darkstalkers. Even though I had to wait a year and a half for Darkstalkers, but that seemed to be the case with most of the stuff for the Jasco era stuff so far, other than like the last year. Um, I haven't really placed very high in a lot of tournaments. I got uh, Dan Hughes, myself, and Corey Nix got uh, fifth at Worlds last year. Um, we lost to Rochester Presents a heel turn, who ended up winning the entire tournament in top eight. So that's been my highest team finish. I got 10th at Michigan with Napalm Man off of fire uh, at Michigan a couple weeks ago and hoping to go to Omaha in a couple weeks and take a good deck and and hopefully uh, do really well. So pretty much that's me in a nutshell. So. All right. Well, what are some good, some of the favorite decks you've had over the course of your career? Uh, na- my Napalm Man Fire has probably been one of my favorites. Um, the burst damage capabilities of that deck is just insane for a five-hander. Um, my Awful Life is, an- is one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of my tried and trues. I usually go back to it if I'm uh, stuck in deck building. I'll go back play that for a while and then figure out what I want to go from there, either add or subtract. Um, let me see. Uh, shoot. Uh, Metal Man's been a good one, too. Uh, Metal Man is about your topic about characters who are heavily underplayed right now in major events. Uh, I believe Metal Man's one of those characters that uh, has the potential to win an entire event just off the back of his own ability because he's just retardedly good. Because he has, you can you hit one attack, you have an attack every turn. And that's all you need to kill your opponent. If you can hit someone multiple times in a turn with the same attacks over and over and over again, eventually you're gonna bust through and kill him. So but, we'll, um, we'll segue right into that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned okay. Metal Man. What are some of the other characters yep. that you think that we haven't been seeing on purpose? On purpose, um, because you think that you yeah, need to be saving them up for nationals. High, yeah, for nats. Um, Metal Man's definitely one. Um, shoot, uh, we were talking about uh, like we've seen Ryu. He's been around. Um, who who else did we talk about before the show? I'm going. Uh, well, I want to know why do you say Metal Man? Okay, well, Metal Man. I think people are holding him in his back pocket because uh, off of either all or void. Um, you can play Transform with him, and with Transform, you can basically have one attack in hand, Transform, bring in more attacks, build as you're attacking, and then you can Scorch Wheel for who knows how many. As long as you can pass your checks, you can Scorch Wheel for X amount of cards, draw, 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 and then if you hit everything, they all just come down, and then you basically just rinse, wash, repeat over and over and over again. Wash, rinse, repeat over and over again. So your opponent can't block anymore. Um, he always has uh, he has the access in void right now. Might have the best control pieces with caught red handed revoke, um, dust in the wind, which kills tons of characters. Um, just because uh, a lot of them, a lot of the newer characters have, have speed boosts and like Yamato Man or Wily, uh, dust in the wind just wrecks those guys so easily. Um, another character that probably hasn't seen a lot of play lately, um, Felicia hasn't seen a lot of play. Ex- Broberg played her a lot over the summer, but the last couple tournaments she hasn't been around at all. Um, Kadath hasn't been around for a while. I think Kadath's a sleeper guy that uh, people are sleeping on because uh, he's in the Endines, and I, I think we kind of overlooked a lot of the Endines guys other than Runica. Um, because just Runica was busted when she first came out, and then they fixed her to make her a little more fair, which is nice. Um, I'm hoping someone makes a play with an, a Schecter deck, because uh, even though she loses to Dust in the Wind, but um, I hope Schecter shows up. Um, I think Swordman might see some play. Um, maybe Piglet playing Clark or Napalm Man. Uh, like a uh, Maple Man's been around, but I would definitely like to see a Clark deck, uh, a not like a a throw, 
low variance, maybe off of fire, might be able to do something too. I think. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you think? What are some of your characters that you um, think that are, haven't been seen since Um, just with Vase because we've talked about oh, just yep. how good his synergy is with mm-hmm. poison, and yet yeah. he has made up to zero appearance since uh, the second time he got it. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking um, that maybe people are just holding on for the larger uh, event. He does have access to one of the coolest combos I've seen pulled off, where you can blow up on questionable loyalty, bring in one with the new enhancements, and then do it over again. It's it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat combo off of Earth. Um, perhaps some form of Yamato Man, or maybe an mm-hmm. Abyss Mom with Yamato Man's stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I can see that. Yamato Man gave Bismon just a whole new uh, toolkit of attacks and guns. Yeah, yeah Sword Man too. He gets Sword Man stuff too. So yeah. you got multiple characters, and, and Flying Spear is a real card. Yeah. That Ultra Rare attack is a real card. And yeah. um, probably Tomahawk Man because he looks mm-hmm. to be a pretty decent defender. Uh, mm-hmm. You have all that built in support already from Matrix and KOF. And, yep. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he, some uh, of the Tali stuff can be used because she also yeah. was mentioned high. Yeah, the golden ticket helps him out immensely, so yeah. you can really just go off with just the golden ticket in your staging area. I was talking with Mark with Nusi about that, and uh, you can still use his first F to start your turn, and then as you blow up foundations after that, his F activates once you get underneath your opponent. Mm-hmm. So you can still, so you can still, you can have that floating effect, so you can use your other Fs like. Uh, solar powered and um, the uh, the one four that goes into your card pool that gives you plus one your uh, I forget what the card is um, but uh, the one that gives minus checks plus checks uh, but yeah you can do a lot of that and then drop below your opponent and then just go to town on them and getting plus threes to all your checks and minus ones to all their checks and you can pretty kill them pretty quickly especially with assassination attempts so yeah. that's a that's a really good card in him as well. Um, oh. I want to see Keo two play. Keo one got some play in in California. Mm-hmm. I want to see some Keo two love, uh, because uh, him brash and aggressive and Yamato man's flying spear ultra rare attack can get pretty ugly pretty yeah. quickly for some people. Or Andy, Andy off of Earth or yeah, Andy off Earth is always just good. Yeah, that's a good solid meta deck. Uh, like Miles playing Terry. That's just a good anti-meta deck, you know. Yeah. Just the f- whole whole fatal fury is just they just give middle fingers to the meta. They don't care. Yeah. They just do what they do. So you know, and then they throw their hat backwards, and then Spider Man comes by and picks it up for him. So, yeah. all right. So the next topic we have is the new colors, uh, which have been uh, getting quite a bit of talk in both praise and. Admonishment. Uh, we are pretty much split. Uh, I've been reading the for uh the Facebooks or the various groups. It's almost mm-hmm. pretty much split. Though it's leaning more towards that it's okay, but people are still kind of what's the term? Uh, they're kind of they're, they're not really sure about it yet. We're I really think. used to UFS looking a certain way. I think yeah. the character yeah. cards are fine. Oh yeah, the, the character cards are fantastic. Yep. Uh, symbol placement is good. Uh, I know some people uh, have reservations about the symbol placement, but yeah, from a myself gameplay, included, yeah. It helps chain uh, resource symbols easier. If you play mm-hmm. in stacks, yep. they're attacked on top of each other. You can see the symbol chain work out much easier. Yes, sir. Um, however, the rest of the cards, and let me pull up one. Uh, we will come back to Baelcor himself a little bit later in the show, but we're going to look at some of the other stuff. Um, here we have Dragon Slayer. We're really, really used as a community because UFS has been with us for, what, this community since its inception. We're very much used to a certain way the cards look. And mm-hmm. we keep forgetting that new players do not know the color coding system of orange is attack, gray is foundation, blue, blue, is, card. blue is uh, action, action, and green is asset. Correct. Um, from a design standpoint, some people and I agree this is not the best design, and looks very retro, almost like different like art from 
Marvel Overpower and Magic Season 1. <laughs> I never really thought of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're all right. This kind of does like have like a retro look to it. Yeah, it kind of um, does. My personal critiques on this is I don't think that this lady needs to be outside her box. You have plenty of room down here or plenty of room up here to denote that it's an attack. It doesn't need to be covered mm-hmm. in the art. I think that it, it, it like it could be it could have been placed next to the maybe in the break next to breaker or maybe just left where it was in how yeah. the other cards used to be where it's back over to the left all the way to the side. I don't really think they really needed to bump it out a bit, but I understand for newer players it might seem a little easier for them, mm-hmm. but um that's my main problem with the card I believe with the with the new template. Like, the, the symbol thing, I don't like it, but I understand why it's like that. It's for new players. Um, I love the joystick input for speed. Uh, yeah. that, that one I got from – that uh, Miles, actually, Miles Tyler actually pointed that out to me, and I'm just like, that it is. Because, you know, you go, you go step up to a Mortal Kombat 2 or a Street Fighter or even, like you said, um, Dead or Alive or whatnot, you, you have the – the little arrows around the joysticks to for inputs and that just works perfectly. <clears throat> and then um, I I know some people were talking about the font. I don't know if the font has changed at all. I don't know. I can't. I don't. I don't have an old card here. Let me pull out an old card. I have some cards with me. I don't, I don't think, think the, the font, font has changed. changed. Oh, it is. It's, it's a, a little, little thinner. thinner. It's not as bold. The uh, like the Dragon Slayer on the older cards pre-Blood Omen, they're not. Um, they're bold. These are more just like a normal card text. So that could change in printing. That I don't know. So, um, but... Uh, Alright, guys. Uh, in the chat, uh, I had to, I turned up the volume. I usually keep the volume down because uh, Jesse's and I, Mike, sometimes uh, have echo when it goes to YouTube. So I bumped the volume up a little. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Um... Sorry to interrupt, Chris. Uh, That's all right. No, no, no issue. No problem. And this is me being grumpy old UFS man. Uh, I looked at it as a bit more of hand-holding with the joystick arrows. Because joystick arrows didn't click in my mind. It's like, why do we need arrows to designate when we already have a three-color zone system already in place? But when you said mm-hmm. joysticks, that makes more much more sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one design change that we've discussed at great length, but still, it's probably one of their best choices, is the shield over just the circle, because that does yep. greatly, greatly make it easier to differentiate where the speed is versus where the block is. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Other than that, no. Uh, cards, fine. The template. The art is gorgeous. Yeah. I don't... Art, yeah. Art's really good. They got good people to work on it this time around. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly don't have too much problem with the templates. I would just find somewhere else to put the card designator where it is. Yeah. Um, let me think. Where else can we look at this? So we're going to go back to Baelcorp. We're still not discussing him, guys. You're going to have to give us a bit. And we got a lot of other things we got to talk about that goes with it, actually. So when they were discussing Baelcorp, uh, Jasko actually put up this quote. Uh, let me fix it right here. I got uh, it pulled up if you need it. We are no longer supporting height, weight, or blood typing characters, and we feel those traits are unnecessary and take up space on the character. UFS is already so dynamic that there's already t- that there's already a ton of design space. Um, personally, I really don't like this. Uh, that's taking away part of an identity UFS always had. And uh, just for the sake of, wow, Bale 4 is really big now. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> we'll get yeah, it coming, from, coming from a newer player, like I've only been playing since KOF 13, so the only card that I've had to deal with with height or weight was Soul Purpose, which was a height card, I believe. So... Like, the gender thing, I understand, and I think that needs to stay, but, like, height, weight, blood type, I understand you were saying that there were older, like, Darkstalker cards that dealt with blood type, and maybe weight and height, but um, as, like, a new, like I said, like, as for newer players, and I, let's say, it's a uh, post-KOF 13 era Jasko, um, 
it might not matter as much uh, other than like to the old timers that sat through the years of four attack decks. Yeah. So um, it might matter to them more than well, it will to like to a newer player. It's kind of like stripping away some uniqueness the game had uh, that okay. will make it different and more of its own entity uh, versus other things that run a, I guess the magic terminology would be a commander style deck. Or like a main personality in Dragon Ball like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. I understand. Um, I mean, we still have cards in the meta now uh, that look for gender male, and that's what they're keeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the sex of the card. To that extent, I say, and get, taking the stats off Bale Core is actually a really bad thing to do because the stats would just go here. You're not losing out any artwork space here. It is blank with purplish pink swirling clouds. Well, I they could have just, because like the older character cards have the, its own like designated box to go into for the gender, height, weight, and blood type. Oh, yeah. They could have just Relate it like they did with the uh, with the enhances. They could have just let's have it just floating out there like they do with the gender male symbol. Mm -hmm. They could have just had it floating underneath it, and that would have been fine too. Wouldn't although, have taken away any of the art. Although to be fair, since Veil Core is a demon lord, they would be blood type NA. But you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. height may make a difference. Uh, I don't think weight would. I don't think we've used weight in quite a while, but I know we've used height. Uh, Fairly recently, I think. Yeah, the like the, the the one card that comes to mind is is Soul Purpose, the Caden Two card from Tides. That's the card that I remember. I don't know if there was one after that. I'm not entirely sure. But um, there's one thing that we do want to look at is um, the color on the card is now purple for the the difficulty and the control. Yes. So maybe that will be um, kind of like the old purple card that we used to have. Um, maybe that's going to be the set designated character card color since the older ones are blue and that might confuse some people with the action card because mm -hmm. the action cards are also blue so maybe they're changing that up which is not that bad it works well with the Belcor colors because it's like pinks and, and purples and blacks which it looks fine with And, uh, but, Brock, if it's bad now, just wait for it to come out on YouTube. You know YouTube does all that automated post-production cleanup and whatnot. So, you know. Am I not allowed we'll enough? There. No, no, no. Uh, it was on my end because okay. uh, my mic picks up my speakers. So it sometimes sure. gets a reverb. Gotcha. Um, and if you also notice, there's no set symbol, like no set logo anymore. It's right there. Oh, I mean, like, that's like, yeah, no, that's like the set, the, the Tri Swords is the set logo. Oh, okay. But the, it the does say IP Red Horizon for property. It doesn't but... say Red Horizon in the corner anymore. It just says it at the bottom. So, yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's going to be something different. And they also said something about, um, where is it? They also said on another card that um, they're going to be updating the template. Um, I know some card games, they will change their templates ever so slightly from set to set. Like DBZ used to do this back in the score days where they had the scouter at the bottom. It kept changing with the saga. So maybe with like Street Fighter, um, something happens and maybe like something changes ever so slightly or whatever. I don't know. They said that they, they might be updating the template as more sets come out. I forget which card they said that on. Just um, as long as they're not, don't do anything to the back of the card. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't do that. No, no, I can't do that. No, just just as long as it's the it's the front of the card, and you know maybe they'll I don't know make something more bold, or they'll add the bar back to the top to go across. But that takes away from the art. I know that's a big part of UFS is is the art. I know yeah. a lot of people love the art in this game, so that might be one thing that they're never going to do again is put that solid bar across the top. So. All right. so we're going to stop talking about the thing, uh, okay. about uh, the template. We're going to sure. move into what your predictions are for next. And then we, if we got time, which okay. I'm sure we will, we will go over the spoilers that have been bail core this far. Sounds good. Um, all right. So we got my, uh, we got teams tomorrow. Uh, my, Bold prediction for that is is that Omaha will finally get their first piece of cardboard. 
Um, there's a team of Miles, Danielle, and Mason. Um, I've been talking to them. I'm pulling for them. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Miles finally gets his Terry on cardboard. I really do. I think it might be this year at Nats. Um, I think they'll probably face. Um, I believe Phil and Ben are teaming, and they might have Dave on their team. That's going to be a pretty formidable team. So I'm I'm thinking they might be facing them in finals since um, Phil's kind of the the Drew Maffei line buddy stand in. So um, I think they'll they'll uh, have a pretty good match. I wish I was hoping it was, uh, the events were going to be streamed, but I don't think it's going. They're not going to have any streaming capabilities there. Um, I also for singles, um, I don't think Turbo Man's going to make top eight. Um, I think Ryu, Ryu will make some, a big push. I think he'll be, there'll be a bunch of him, a bunch of napalms. Um, but I think a non ATL player wins nationals. Finally, um, I'm pulling for a few different people, so I, I don't want to give out names that I want to seem like, um, favorite favoritism, but, um, slam on cardboard 2016. Um, but, uh, I'm I'm pulling I'm pulling for a few different people. So um, I have a bunch of people giving me updates when uh, the tournament's going to start. So um, I'm hoping Metal Man makes a showing because he needs to because he's too good not to be played. So I like I like we talked earlier. Him and Base are probably going to be there. It's just people are saving their best decks for Nats. What do you got? Do you got anything anything that you might uh, come out of the woodwork? Just the base, because we haven't mm -hmm. seen him anywhere, and mm -hmm. that really just strikes me as odd. Um, yeah. Turbo Man is definitely floating around the meta right now. People are trying to yeah. recapture that magic that was the Athena deck in a Turbo Man mm -hmm. deck, and I think mm -hmm. somebody's got to do it. Yeah, um, it's tough, though, with him, but yeah, you can it can be done. Uh, the only issue with him is, though, he's very squishy, and... Um, one thing I noticed at Michigan is that uh, Napalm Man can eat seven handers alive pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Um, so they have to kind of be lucky. And, like once <laughs> once someone gets into top sixteen or eight, it's all about the matchups from there. It really is. Um, you can have you can have someone um, like like take Corey at Worlds last year. He got he played really good. He got in. And then his matchups were pretty favorable all the way through. Um, even even when he got to Kevin, and when Kevin was playing his ver his version of Assets Athena, he uh, that matchup wasn't too bad for him. Um, even though Kevin had beaten him, I believe earlier in the weekend with that deck, um, Corey made some adjustments and learned, you know, figured out how to beat it. But um, but it's all about your matchups when you hit top cuts, and that's all that matters. Because you can you can buzz straight through, you can go undefeated at in Swiss, and then um, hit that one deck that's just running hot, you know. And the and they might you know you can be the one you can be Swiss champ, lose to number sixteen, and then you know just because the matchup's bad. So um, there's that. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll hopefully we'll get some really early. They're supposed to start what at nine, yeah. ten, something like that. So hopefully we'll get some updates in the morning um, for us uh, central time zone people. Uh, probably right when we're going to work or just when we're about to start. Uh, so I'll, I'll be bugging people. I'll try not to bother them during games, but I'll definitely be uh, I'll definitely be keeping my ear to the ground and posting stuff on on the Rockford Facebook page as I hear it. So. That will be something. Um, All right. I don't. Uh, it's it's hard to bet against Garrett, man. It really is. It's hard to bet against him. I uh, can the, only bet against Garrett because there is a giggles. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But but Garrett does own the 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 head heads up matchup against him though. So um, we'll have to see. Uh, it's just it's hard it's hard to say that Garrett won't win another cardboard another piece of cardboard. Or Ben, by the way, because Ben's two time, I believe. Is he two? No, he's 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 he won last year, and Dave won the so ATL's won the last two. 
I believe. So um, it's hard to bet against ATL and Nationals, especially it's in their own backyard. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of trash talking while, while everyone's playing. So we'll what see. else do you think is going to happen? Uh, uh, think any uh, any uh, special spoilers will be given out or uh, anything like that? You Jason's think? going to be there with the laptop and spoil the entirety of uh, <laughs> the entire scene of a blood omen. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. I know we're getting another card tomorrow, so I know that. Um, they said that, I believe, uh, on today's post, they said we were going to get another card, and then we're starting a new character when they get back. So, um, yeah, I'm just 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 bummed I couldn't be there. That's all, because, you know, I, to, I, didn't get to, I haven't been to Nationals at all yet since I've been playing, so I uh, really, wish, really wish I could have made it. But time off, no time off left, uh, other than for Rockford PTC, which I ha I can't not take off for that so so what else we got what else are we talking about tonight uh, uh, after that i don't know if my predictions were so bold but they were they were they were they were pretty out there especially with the omaha ones because mason's running hot right now with 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 off of his ptc win so um i think they'll pull through i think they'll be all right yeah uh, i can guess we can actually go over the actual spoilers now. okay Sure, that's cool. So, first off, we got Balecore, who I've been playing quite a bit in Exceed. He, he's very, very nice. <laughs> oh, cool. Does he uh, kind of work like his character card in UFS? Because I know um, they kind of try to mirror that pretty well. Well, I'll grab the box later and let you know once we're done. Um, okay. So, Balecore is uh, 628 Earth, Evil, and Order. Enhance your turn. Your opponent's uh, checks get minus one for the rest of this turn. Enhance commit your charge or slam attack gets plus five damage. That first E is super spicy. Yeah. Um, that stacks. So have fun blocking on his kill turn for the most part. Um, and then that plus five damage, when we get to his other attack, um, it pretty much makes any card you're eating five damage straight off the bat even if you if you partial block you're going to be eating five or more damage yeah um one one thing i do want to point out is um we we've, we've been kind of told that know your objective is coming back in this set so it's probably going to be in his support so that's something else that we can look forward to we're getting know your objective back at least so um it's been kind of Shane leaked a bit on sometimes on the things when he makes forum posts, he's done special little, little tiny things like that. But um, that gives evil more help because evil is looked at as one of the worst symbols in the game right now, I guess, because it, it just, it, it has some good attacks. It just lacks like um, foundation support and character support for the most part. So, Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that first, that his top enhances, that makes him playable right out of the box. Just that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. Now, let me pull this up. Um, slams off order. So we got Knight Slam you can use, Tomahawk yep. Slam, yep. Uh, Templar Justice, which is really, mm -hmm. really good with him. Yeah. Uh, Magnet Slam. I don't even think I even need to say how good that's going to be. <laughs> What's that? It's a three low for four, right? It's a yeah. three low for four. So yeah, within the commit, three low commit for him. Nine. Yep, have fun partial blocking. Uh, that, even uh, better you know. top spin. Oh yeah, that's that's really nice. Especially uh if you reverse your opponent with it. Ooh. No. Even though you don't get to draw a card, but still though you get to reverse and it's a four low for nine, they have to respect that. Yeah. And then Pharaoh Slam, which is mm -hmm. one of my favorite cards. Oh, because that also adds minus one to your opponent's checks for the rest of the turn. Yeah, so it's three high for nine, and they're essentially blocking with a plus two block modifier. That's cute. That's really good. I have never. I have, I've been looking them off of evil more than order. So that's See, a good. That's you, a. That's a good. That's a good big. That's you, a good dig. You gotta look them off of order, in my opinion, okay. over evil. And everybody's so hyped with him off evil, and they mm -hmm. are rightfully so. But order just has really good stuff, and you get access mm -hmm. to Pharaoh Man stuff. Yeah, which that's lets true. Lets you hack checks and further uh, further dig them deeper. 
Mm -hmm. into, oh yeah, that's uh, true. Because yeah, he's kind of like he's kind of like a a kind of like a feral man in a way, yeah. you know. Because obviously your first enhance, unless it's the first enhance, will be that your opponent's checks get minus one. So um, you're you're they're always looking at like that pseudo minus pseudo plus one speed, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like um, it's that's really good. Yeah, it that's also, that's a real good find. It also gives you Egyptian pyramid in them. Is that another minus one while it's ready, or is that minus one when it's in your cart staging in your area. staging area? While it's in your staging that's area. That's dirty. That's pretty dirty. And um, just make uh, then if they play any reversals uh, during your turn, mm -hmm. you can uh, stack that E of keep giving them negative yeah. checks, and then uh, mm -hmm. make a di check of a difficulty of four. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's <laughs> that does not sound fun at all to play against that at yeah. all. Uh, off of evil, um, in combination with one of his other cards. Uh, assassination attempt becomes a real thing. Like it, it's already a real thing, but you actually get to commit their character and get the plus four damage mod. Yeah. So, and I believe, and I believe assassination attempt is a slam, so you can add five more damage to it if you want. So that's pretty nice. So I could. They, he has some. He has. Some, I don't off of Earth. He might use some of the Nightman stuff. I believe uh, those are slams too. Some of his slams yeah. uh, can work with that. Um, we'll have to see what the rest of his support is, but um, I think he's going to be pretty fun. Uh, just he's going to get instant play with that top E. There's no reason not to try him out, you know. And he and he's an, he's an average six hand size, twenty eight health character. So there's nothing like crazy about that. But that minus one to the check, like I've said multiple times already. Actually, Snake's Lamb looks pretty viable in him. Is that the one where they have? Is that that's just is that the one where they have to commit? A face down to block it? Uh, no, your opponent commits two face down foundations. Okay, yeah, so that's adding like two, that's almost like three speed to your, wow, that's really good too. So it's three that low looks, for six, that means six. the snake slam comes at three low for 11, it's safe, oh. and all you gotta do is play a low attack before it to get this. Oh, that's not hard off of Earth, no. they have a lot of low attacks. Yeah, um, that sounds pretty good. So next up, we got yep. his, that attack we were looking at. Yep, Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer, which is a 4-3, plus one low block, four mid for five, breaker one, charge and slam, uh, bail core symbols, and enhance. If this attack is not completely blocked, commit your opponent's character. This card, I'm going to steal one of Mark's terms is uh this card is nuts for the numbers the numbers on this card are insane mm -hmm. uh you have more damage than the cost i mean for the difficulty which is awesome um the block is amazing some plus one low with breaker on it uh it's a mid attack which it's easy to block mid attacks nowadays but um if you can make it where it's not completely blocked uh this is the card that you can combo um assassination attempt with because you commit their character with this and then you drop assassination attempt after it and you just you just beat them down very very fast yeah. um that e is something i believe that those symbols need um i don't think order needs it because they have that um that runica card that is remove pitch one momentum commit uh commit your opponent's character but on an attack, this is pretty big. Um, they don't usually have a lot of uh, character committal on attacks, I believe, in the current Jasco era. And this is a common, by the way. Um, that's crazy that it's a common, and it can do it does the things that it does. So um, I love it. It's my favorite piece that has been shown so far. Well, we've been expressing over the course of the show that Jasco has made a point to say that they want the game to go by quicker. They mm -hmm. want the attacks to be uh, stronger and uh, just more better numbers across the board, which they are definitely yeah. doing with this these last two sets. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's that's and it gets five damage from Bailcor. It's a charge and slam, so it gets five damage. So it's a four mid for ten that they have to fully block or their characters committed. So that's just yeah, that's just crazy. To, to steal 
an Omaha a Omaha line. It's just crazy. It is. Uh, next up, we got as soon as I can pull it up. Uh, General of the Abyss. Yep, General of the Abyss. Yep. Uh, it's a one four foundation no block uh, bail core symbols. Uh, Enhance, E, destroy. If your character is committed, commit one of your opponent's foundations. Uh, this works really well with Bailcore because more often than not, you're going to be, your character is most likely going to be committed going into your opponent's turn. So you can use this defensively to commit one of their best foundations defensively. Or if you throw your character ability early, you can um, say you have uh, something that draws a card and they got caught red handed out. You can throw your character's ability off, destroy this, commit their commit their caught red handed, commit their dust in the wind, or whatever, and push through damage, which is really good. Um, this is a really nice card uh, for evil. Uh, I know that Earth doesn't have a lot of target committal other than a couple of the Joe cards that will be rotating whenever Street Fighter drops. Um, and then Order has a bunch of stun. So um, Evil definitely got a lot of help with this card too. I know I'm on the Evil train right now, but... No, no, uh, I mean, rightfully so. I want to see, and we're going to be looking at stuff, but I want to see if people can start implementing some of his tech into Dimitri because that's mm -hmm. not going to be a fun thing to fight. Oh God, no, 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 it won't be. Now he does share two symbols with Dimitri. That is true. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I don't think none of none of his life cards rotate with tides. So, um, oh, he does. He loses some of the Gabrick support that he's going to be missing. So, um, I think Dimitri's still going to be another force to be reckoned with. But he might have to change up his game a little bit with the throws kind of rotating out. But yeah, it's a solid card, it's a solid spam. Uh, I don't like the four check, but for what it does, it's worth it. I don't know if it's a four X, um, maybe no. maybe a two or a three, um, may a most three, I think, in most decks. If it had a block, it would be a four of. But I, I would definitely definitely ahead. a two of for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a two of. Though I still question if this is sideboard or mainboard. Mm, that's a good that's a good question. I think it might depend on what you think you're uh, um what kind of match what kind of meta you're gonna be running into. Yeah. Um and I was talking with I was talking with Justin Pardo today and we were talking about the like the meta and stuff and it it's hard to read the meta with only like two events going into nationals. So very true. It's gonna be definitely a meta call if you if you if you side or main these. So um well, but I think if you're playing evil, you might main these. I think. I think but, the diff all the other difference that we're not taking into consideration on if we main mm -hmm. or board it is if we're depending on the character we're playing too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If it's Bailcore, I'd probably main it because I'm going to be committed most of the time anyways. Yeah. So, uh, what's the next card we're looking at, Joe? Uh, that is a good question. Do we want to look at um, yeah, Callous Leader? Yeah, Callous Leader is next. Okay. Uh, Chaos uh, Leaders. Two. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go for it. Go ahead. You can read it off. Uh, it's two five. Uh, mm -hmm. plus three mid block response commit and flip, which some people are actually flipping out over this. You actually have two payment costs to play this card. Uh, after your opponent adds any cards to their hand, uh, due to their effect, flip one of their foundations. So. This thing is being put out as one of the big things that Jasco made is in response to Summer Heat. Mm -hmm. My statement to that is still they should have never made Summer Heat and you wouldn't be in these kind of situations. Or they should have made it our card pool is what they should have done. Yeah. And then it's then it then it, then you can react you can respond to that if you need to. Yeah. Uh, yeah again, but, yeah. I've got to bring up the Dimitri synergy in this one because you can mm -hmm. response flip. <laughs> uh, and then flip one of their foundations. That means you could potentially get two foundations on their turn. Yeah. Um, I like this because it 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 doesn't specify it's an ability, and so that's how it can trigger off the summer heat. Because 
Summer Heat's a static effect, not an activated ability. And a lot of cards like let's make this a fair fight only activate off of a played ability. So this actually, if they say they have a card uh, a card handed or a um, ever hopeful, and they play a Summer Heat, you can commit one of their good control pieces. I mean, flip it and get rid of it. Yeah, you. it's a one-time use type thing, but I think the card's powerful enough to where um, it deserves a commit and flip because some, de some decks, like an all deck, will have no a flip stationary, which is fine because all has too much free draw as it is. So um, I believe I believe Keenan will definitely definitely agree with me on that because we were chatting about that. But um, yeah, um, it's definitely a needed card. I like it. I like that this has evil because that means this is a potentially reusable foundation given with some of Ash's support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a really, really overall good card. Uh, I definitely agree that the double payment is necessary for what it's giving us. It rolls a 2-5. It rolls a 3-block. Um, it's also overall, a common. Yeah. But this may be one of those short print commons, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you're, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I think in, in the era of so much draw, this is probably a four of. Even oh, though yeah. it's out of... I think you have to be careful, though, having too many of these in your staging area, but this is definitely a four of because, like, covered handed, that's a four of. Anything that interacts with draw foundation wise is usually unless, it, unless it's unique like trained by the streets it's usually a four of just because there's so much draw out there and this punishes people for drawing which is nice because there's not a lot of stuff like that to punish people for drawing let me look at something caught red-handed so caught red-handed may not be the best target because you're mm -hmm. pretty much whiffing this card for a card that's already going to turn face down but yeah. Um. Most definitely be using this against Summer Heat and other of the non. Oh yeah. Well, no. I'm saying. I'm saying. Uh, like these symbols don't have access to that. Oh, okay. So that's what you're getting. It. it, it yeah. I, I mean, it's 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 card handed, and those symbols are four of. Yeah. These symbols have no access to draw hate, even though this doesn't negate draw hate. It's it doesn't negate draw. It at least um punishes them for drawing. Yes. Covered handed. Covered handed should have been like a rare or an ultra rare. There's no way it should have been. A, it, the, for what it does in the current meta, it's 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 the best anti draw card outside revoke, obviously. But um, this this card is going to help propel those three symbols pretty well because they have no other than like let's make this a fair fight off of order, and they might have another card off of evil that reacts to in cards get added to hand but it doesn't cancel it at least this punches them by taking away their best foundation for adding cards to their hand yep and what i like about this is that actually um it will work off of character abilities and covered handed doesn't so this has one up on covered handed so it, it works with it works against characters as well so if someone tarries you or andy's or metal man's um you can punish them for that yeah because it's targeting committal, which is always good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's flip. It's even better. It just gets rid of it. It's, yeah. It just it just gets rid of it. Unless you're playing against a metal man deck, because then they'll just pick it up anyways, and then replay it. But um, it's one turn longer. They don't have that piece. Gotcha. And coming up on the final card tonight, we are going to be talking about the newest card that was spoiled, uh, Death Seal of the Apocalypse. Which That's is... some title. Oh, yeah. Uh, five difficulty, three, no block, three high for five, charge slam, a static ability of if this attack is completely blocked, it still deals one damage during the damage step. That's very, very important, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and then enhance, if this attack deals damage, your opponent commits two foundations. Yeah, this card's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's highly costed, but it's, it's worth it. Uh. They're always going to take damage. You're always committing two foundations on their turn, which is, unless they perfect block it. But see, I don't know if the perfect blocks negate the one damage because it, it, it's, it's still not completely blocked. So if I block with like a peaceful messenger, it's still, 
I think a peaceful messenger will overwrite the one damage because it's not technically completely blocked. Correct. So I think I think I think you're you can get away with playing a perfect block, but um, yeah, with Balecore you're always doing five if they partial. Yes. So which is awesome. Uh, Mega Man Two loves this card because you can react, give it stun two, stun two, and then commit two more of their foundations, which is pretty slick. Um, so it's 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 four committal on one card, which is which is like Venom Shot territory, where it's stun three, so that's pretty good. Um, what uh, I know there are some other cards that so, re, uh, interact with this card, so, so go ahead and... Uh, unfortunately, I had to look at the LRG, and this is usually mm -hmm. Jesse's job, but in God, I wish yeah. he was here for this. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought this interacted with Trouble for Dinosaurs, or what's it called? Oh, Killing Dinosaurs? Killing Dinosaurs. It unfortunately mm -hmm. does not, because the damage no. step and the block step, step so you different. can't buff up this damage. But, yep. you know, there are still a lot of on-effect triggers you can get on responses yep. that this thing is going to activate. Uh, yep. This thing does set up a good opening uh, attack because you're guaranteed that one plane to set off triggers and you're committing two of their foundations. Uh, one card this works really well with is Ladies Man. Uh, off of Earth, you could also you could play like Terry 2 off of Earth. <laughs> Um, champion of South Town, a ladies' man in that doesn't it ignores progress doesn't count towards progressive. You can drop Death Steel of the Apocalypse, and you can ready stuff that has hasn't been readied for the turn. Um, it allows you to draw with um, with Terry two again if you off of Earth since he has all you can play throw it down then this card after it and you're always going to draw a card with it and commit two other cards on their foundation commit two two foundations. Um, Joe works really well because it's going to hit. You can commit to draw a card. Yep. Um, there's a couple other cards too that work, but it's mostly off of it's mostly off of Earth. Uh, if you want to play this in Doctor Wily too, you can do that, and you're you're just going to be able to commit to and then destroy ready because it's going to deal damage. You can do that as well. Um, there's a couple different cute cute plays you can play with this card, but it, it, it's definitely a good lead in attack because. Yeah, it it gets things it gets the ball rolling pretty quickly. I would actually put this in Pharaoh Man because this further screws over their checks because they're getting rid of two foundations right off the bat. Yeah. Mm hmm The only issue is though, um what would you would you cut your Pharaoh waves down a number or two just to fit this um, in? I always ran with just two Pharaoh waves personally, oh, okay. but you know sure. I was yeah. under that strict rule of only build with what I have. But uh, No, I gotcha. And this is only a single rare, so if you get mm -hmm. like two boxes, you're guaranteed to play set. Oh, yeah, you'll get at least two. Or if, if you're lucky like me, I have thirteen split bodies out of five boxes, so well, five or six boxes. Yeah, so I may take that back, considering this is a hundred and sixty-two card set. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you might you might get three out of a couple. You might get two out of a couple boxes, maybe. Yeah. You gotta think. You, you gotta think what twenty-four, maybe twenty-five rares. Yeah. Maybe. So you you might get one of each. Um, I know the distribution in Battle for Power was a little weird. It was a little wonky. So you might not even get a copy of a rare sometimes because I know I'm still missing. I was missing an ultra rare up to a couple weeks ago, and I and I'm still like only had like a couple of the rares. I didn't have full play sets yet. But um, this is definitely an attack that will. If you're gonna build a deck off of these symbols, you're probably gonna want to play it. Maybe not if you're playing like a uh, Schecter or a. Or a mature build because it's not mids, but um, it's it's going to be you know it's going definitely if you're playing Bellcore, you're definitely going to want to play this because you're looking at five damage commit to or if you're Mega Man two, it's stun four for eight damage okay. with his committal ability, and then if you say you add on some of the Clark support like orders, it's like a, it's a, ten, it's a three high for ten already. So yeah, it's it can get that that, that attack can get pretty big pretty quick. But the art's awesome, though. I oh, just yeah. the art on all of these cards are just ridiculous. Although I'm really looking at that, and I also see Urian headbutt at the same time. Oh yeah, from the guy from Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at least he's not in like in skivvies, though. So that's a well, plus. That's the best so. part. Oh gosh, I know. I know one thing. Of the community has brought up is that he's on the hunt for spiders and dragons, but he doesn't share a symbol for it. 
So I'm wondering if there is some backstory behind that. Like, since those are angel symbols, the chaos, uh, life, and death, um, I know those are the angel symbols, so maybe that card's more an angel's card, and they're hunting him, because technically, would he be con he's, is he considered the dragon of the underlore? I don't know a lot about so, his backstory. So. Supposedly, from what I understand, and I could, this, I could be wrong on this, it's been said such a while ago, he is either Natali's commanding demon lord, okay. or he is the demon that punished Vespira and okay. tore her wings and cast her down to become in that spider realm. Okay. He's okay. one of those two things. I don't remember which one because he has that same symbol that Natalie has when she's in her succubus form. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I don't the, the remember demon which one on it forehead. is, but he's the person that's one of those two. So he's either okay. Natalie's boss or he's the right creature under that cast down Vespira. Okay. Yeah, he's definitely a bad dude. Yeah. I know that for a fact. Yeah, he's pretty I mean, bad. He's hitting a poor thousand year old child right there. So <laughs> that's what we, we promote child abuse in this game. Well, she's a so. thousand, but she's still a young dragon. Yeah, okay. So is she technically a dragon? She then? is a thousand year old dragon girl. Okay, so there there you go. So he's hunting spiders and dragons. So he's yes. hunting her and Vespira. There so. we go. So that confirms there that he is that, okay. the one that he's... tore Vespira apart. He's the hunter. So that's just weird that, that he doesn't match any of the symbols on that card. So it just, just kind of, you know, maybe they ha didn't have the set ready yet or designed yet. So it could be it. But um, I think uh, yeah. level 99 had Belcore first. Okay. Okay. Because he came out in C first along with Tidy. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And I know, I know a lot of people I've talked to are really hyped for Heidi because everybody loves mechs. So. Yeah. You know. So, um, according to the back of Exceed, which everybody should yep. go to level 99 and get. Is that the one where you got the, the promo cards for UFS with? Yes. Or is that a different, that was that one? That was this one. Cool. Um, Baelcor is General of the Abyss, uh, meaning okay. yeah, he is a high up superior demon lord. Okay. Uh, uses his own life to seal the opponent's attacks and wields his own powerful attacks. So, in Exceed, uh, he RFG'd their attacks so they couldn't okay. recycle them and okay. used his own life to uh, life to increase his own uh, own damage. Power? Okay. Yeah. So, he, he, so he's kind of like Iori in a way where he cut himself to do things. Yes. In a way. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Cool. I know I played I played Battlecon. I haven't played the Exceed version yet. So. Oh, Exceed is so much fun. Like the best yeah. character, my favorite character in that thing is uh, Auric. Okay. Which I think he's also appearing in uh, uh, in Blood Omen. Blood Omen. I think it's Oric. Okay. Oh, is that the guy? With, um, doesn't he wield lightning in the old promo cards? Yeah. I think he had like a lightning fist or something in the old yeah, promo cards. Yeah, he, he like supposedly wields Thor's lightning, but he okay. ha doesn't have Mjolnir. Oh, he doesn't but have the hammer. In Exceed, he just like moves across the board, and once he gets like two extremes, it's like, all right, I get close to you. Uh, horrific, horrific uh, close blow, and then I'm going to back all the way up to the other side of the board and do a diving jump kick that's electrified and kill you. Uh, so it's like a safe attack into a dive kick. Cool. Yes. All right. I get, I get it. That's cool. All right, yeah, yeah, I don't. I'm hoping he's. I'm hoping. I know. I'm hoping we get Sebastian because he was a promo card. And I'm hoping we get some other characters that we haven't had in the Red Horizon that were in Red Horizon one and two. I know we're gonna get the stand the staples like Natali, Miska, or you know, Satoshi Reese, but a lot of like the side characters that we haven't had a lot of. I'd like to I'd like to play with a lot of those guys. I think we're getting the little dragon girl again. Okay. We're getting Mei Lin. Okay. Yeah, we're I think that's her name, right? I love uh the flavor text and whenever exceed attack, she does no, I am not that kind of a drag uh it's like you can make a wish, but I'm not that kind of a dragon. Kind of a dragon. Oh, so it's like a Dragon Ball Z reference. Yes. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right. I like uh, that. Unfortunately, we've gone our hour. Uh, okay. Chris, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Yeah, really, thanks for really having enjoyed me. It. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, guys, we will see everybody next week. Hopefully, Jess will be national champion. That way, we don't have to try and track down people to. Uh, interview but <laughs> we only i only say that because we can only interview garrett so many times and he comes <laughs> on with the mustache yeah. again 
I you might as well just more, start like, like you might as well have like a running like commentary like just record one of his other just replay one of his other uh interviews you know you can just do that well i was gonna say if he comes back with that mustache again i'm just gonna zoom the camera up to where it's only the mustache that would be fantastic <laughs> i would but, like that all right guys so we will see you next week again chris thank you so much for coming yeah and thanks for having me again and that'll be it